our third Sunday of Advent. Wow, it's going fast, eh? Please, I invite you to stand as we ready our hearts. Ready my heart for the birth of Emmanuel. Ready my heart for the Prince of Peace. Keep the straw of my life for the body to lie. Light the candle of hope. Let the child come in. Alleluia. 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 Christ the Savior is born. Mine is the home that is born. I, too, welcome you to worship here at Sterling Mennonite Fellowship. Welcome to those of you who are joining us virtually as well. I'd like to uh, highlight a few announcements. Um, Please do note, I think think they all know already, the children are practicing for uh, next Sunday's Christmas program uh, right after the service today. Uh, Adults who uh, wish to... Uh, remain uh, can fellowship. There is no formal adult Sunday school today. Uh, You'll note that there are quite a few uh, opportunities for uh, local participation. There's still some snow clearing slots available, uh, various giving opportunities, uh, reporting opportunities for those who need to do that for the annual meeting. And um, Also, in conjunction with uh, next week's service, an invitation to uh, bring a plate of Christmas goodies to share after the service. On behalf of the Gift Discernment Committee, we are looking for a council chairperson. This is an elected position for a two-year term commencing after the annual meeting in February 2023. The chairperson does have to be a member of this church. If, after thinking and praying about this, you know of someone or you feel led to take on this position, please speak to a member of the Gift Discernment Committee, who are Connie Dunford, Gary Funk, Sharon Hepner, Eva Lowen, and Barb Zare, or the present council chairperson, Crystal Hebert. In the uh, wider faith community, there are quite a number of opportunities also for singing and volunteering and fellowshipping. I will let you look at those uh, as you have the opportunity. Today we light three candles for the third Sunday of Advent. These candles represent hope, peace, and joy.
Jesus came with love to Bethlehem. He comes with grace into our souls. He will come with justice at the end of the world. invite you to stand again if you're able feel free to bounce a bit if you want that's not dancing we can get that song put up there that'd be great not that song <laughs> long time ago in Bethlehem so the holy Bible say Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hark now, hear the angels sing, born is born today. And all will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Well, shepherds watched their flocks by night, they saw a bright new shining star. Heard a choir from heaven sing The music came from afar Hark now hear the angels sing New kings born today And all will live forevermore Because of Christmas Day Now Joseph and his wife Mary Came to Bethlehem that night they found no place to bear her child, not a single room was inside. By and by, they found a little nook in the table of forlorn. And in a manger cold enough, Mary's little boy child was born. Trumpet sound, the angels sing, listen to what they say. We all will live forevermore because of Christmas Day again. The trumpet sound, the angels sing. Listen to what they say. We will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Amen. Please take a moment and turn and smile through your masks if you have them on and with your eyes and all that. <clears throat> I invite you to be seated. This is a, uh, I don't know if how many of you will know this song, uh, Helpless and Hungry. It's a song that's in the new uh, purple. What's it called again? Sing the story? Voices Together, sorry, Voices Together, which we don't have in the pews here. But uh, it's from that, that uh, hymnal, that new hymnal. And it's unique in that um, it can be sung in conjunction with or simultaneously to What Child Is This? Which I'm sure everybody knows that, or pretty much everybody should know that. So what we're going to do is Lenore's going to sing the first verse of Help Us and Hungry. Then together we're going to sing What Child Is This? The first verse. Then I'm going to sing the second verse of Helpless and Hungry. And you're welcome to sing along uh, on Helpless and Hungry if you know it or, or as you learn it, feel free. And uh, then the third, there's three verses in each song. The third verse of each song we're going to sing simultaneously. So you can pick which one you want to sing. The words will be up there for either one. So 
Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs>
a child, a child of the poor. Invite the kids to come up for the children's story. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys today? Did you have a good week? Yeah. Did you play in the snow at all? Yeah. Do any of you have a favorite flower? Pink flowers. Those are good. Yeah. Arlo, do you have a favorite flower? Yeah. What is it? You don't know. <laughs> do any any of other you? guys have a favorite flower? Blue flowers, those are good. Great. So, do you guys know what a rose is? Or what it looks like? Yeah? Oh, that's too bad. They do die easily. You have to take care of them. So th these are some roses. So I was reading up on roses, and um, I found out some cool facts that I want to share with you all today, because we're going to be talking, the song that um, today we're talking about is about a rose. So I found out that different color roses have different meanings. So a yellow rose means friendship and kindness, um, and a pink rose means admiration, so like looking up to someone thinking that they're cool. Um, a red rose means love. Um, so I also learned that a rose is the oldest flower in the world, so like super duper old. And the largest rose had a diameter of 33 inches or 84 centimeters. So I like 33 inches is about half of me. This big is like the from one petal to the other petal of it's like in a circle. That's how big it was. Isn't that massive? And then the stem was six feet, so that's much taller than I am. So this big is how big the stem was. Isn't that so massive? That's humongous. So, God made all these beautiful flowers, and especially roses, for us to enjoy. So, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day that you've made. I pray that we have an awesome week. Thank you for all your beautiful creation that we get to see and enjoy. Thank you for the roses and the lilies and the tulips. I pray that this week, especially, we can enjoy your beautiful creation. I pray everyone here has a great week. Amen. So, to remember, like, roses and what we talked about today, I have a coloring pages, page for all you guys that I will give to you. Um, if you want, I can go grab some coloring utensils from downstairs. I forgot to get them earlier, but I'll give these to you guys. And if you want, you can give them as a Christmas present or something as well.
I'll be reading from Isaiah 35, 1 to 10. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen, strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then the, will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirst, thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about it. No lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Eva, for reading for us. Good morning, and let me be one of already many people who welcome you to Sterling this morning, whether you are in person, on Zoom, or watching at a later date. It is good to explore scripture together and worship together. I'm Kennedy, and I am one of the pastors here. For our Advent series, we are singing our way to the manger. And uh, I don't know about you, but I have been loving this series for Advent this year. It has brought me so much joy. The words and melodies that we sing together as a community are often much more important to our faith than most of the sermons we hear. I can remember maybe a couple sermons that have impacted me greatly over the course of my life, but these songs that we sing year after year are so ingrained in my brain and shape how I view both God and the world around me, often without me even realizing it. These songs hold us together and carry us through important times in the Christian calendar. So I think it is brilliant that we are taking the time to explore these songs a bit more in depth and look at some of the deep truths that are held in the songs that we sing. Before we dive into our song and our scripture today, I invite you to join me in prayer. So please bow our heads and let's talk with God. Creator God, we thank you for music, for songs that proclaim your good news and tie all Christians together throughout the generations and theological disagreements. We thank you for this Advent season where we live into the hope and joy that Jesus' birth brought. And I pray that as we study this hymn and scripture this morning, that we would be reminded of your divinity in even the most fragile and human parts of our lives. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. Uh, this morning, Ed lit the three candles for us. Um, the joy candle is our candle for this morning, along with the hope and peace candles. And we light these candles in order to ground ourselves in the season, to signal that something is changing. They center us on some of the big feelings of Advent. We hope for Jesus to come. We prepare for Jesus' peace, and we celebrate that Jesus will come. I know that this will probably come as no surprise to all of you, but I love Advent. I love the anticipation and the excitement that comes this, in this season. Um, yeah, I love getting ready for Christmas and all of the things that it brings. 
We are deep into Advent right now, three weeks in, and yet, Chris, and Christmas is just around the corner, and yet it is also so far away, and there's so much to do left before we get to that wonderful time. The big feeling of joy and anticipation can make me vibrate uh, if I think about it at all. I just love it. Uh, I love sitting in that feeling and just knowing that the excitement and the journey is part of the joy of Advent, slowly building towards the joy of Christmas. I love all the traditions that come with Christmas, setting up the decorations, getting my house to feel Chris just Christmassy enough, making sure that the tree is so full of lights that it's blinding, um, setting up the nativity scene with my siblings every year at my parents' place, baking cookies with my friends, listening to all my favorite Christmas albums, writing cards, making gifts lists, both for myself and for others. And I think a lot of us have similar feelings towards Advent and towards this season of anticipation. The joy that comes by just doing the little things to prepare. All of these activities and traditions help us get ready. They help us celebrate because Advent is all pointing towards that very special day of Christmas. Steve Bell talked in his first sermon to us uh, on the first sermon of Advent, how Advent is a time to declutter and make room for Jesus. And that is so true. Advent is this maternal time where we see what, what, is, good, what is good and what needs to be let go. A, a time to prepare for Jesus. And I also think it's also a time to add in things, a time to build in things that set the expectations for what Christmas is. Advent is both a time of decluttering and making room and building excitement for what is to come. Both the hope and the joy at this time are important to feel. And growing up, I think for a lot of us, that excitement I felt was probably all about Christmas being a time where I got gifts and where my extended fam I got to see my extended family who I didn't see the rest of the year. And you know what? I think that's fair. Those are very exciting things and I stand by them. <laughs> I really love those parts of Christmas and I continue to look forward to them. But as I have grown in my faith, that preparation is not just an activity-based one, but a heart-based one kind of like what Steve was talking about. It is not just a time to make sure that the house is decorated and the gifts are purchased. It is time to prepare mentally and spiritually for living into the joy of knowing that our Savior came down to earth for us. This season of Advent is so important for our lives as Christians. It helps us shift focus because sometimes it is easy for, for us to forget the reason for our faith is because we have a good God who loves us and teaches us how to love one another. A God who loves us so much that God came down to live among us. As we do the activities and build the joy, we can't help but feel the joy of what is to come as well. And so we, along with Christians all over the world, throughout time and space, light these three candles today as we see the joy that blooms as we believe and know that the prophecies about Jesus the Messiah are true. I think this is a perfect headspace for us as we look at our Christmas song this morning. We are living into that joy of anticipation of Christmas. So let us shift focus to our song what can low how a rose tell us about who God is and what can we learn about the Christmas story from this hymn? The hymn, Low How a Rose, is pretty new for me. I know that is not true for most of the people in this space this morning as we sing it year after year at Sterling. So while it is not a song that I have nostalgia for or remember from childhood, it is a song that I have started to love the past few years as I have joined this community. It is a complex song with a lot of beautiful imagery within it that serves as a powerful Christmas reminder for me. And I chose this song because as I said earlier, I think the songs have the power to teach us deep truths about God that are often easier to remember than hearing in a sermon. And I think that this song definitely carries the theological weight. The song began as a German, German hymn titled 
Es ist ein Rose entsprungen. I don't know how good my pronunciation is, but I, tr I, tr I practiced for that. <laughs> um, the first recording of the hymn has been traced back to the early 1500s, but it is assumed that there would have been many different versions of the song sung even before this recording. I love that. Christians singing different versions and translations of this song with different lives and experiences, but all singing the same words about the good news of Jesus Christ. This song was first translated into English in the year 1894 with just the first two verses, and then a third was added, and shortly after that, two more optional verses were added as well. When I first started, analyzing and researching this song, the first thing that jumped out at me was how much scripture was being referenced in just one song. It is filled with passages throughout both the New Testament and the Hebrew scriptures. The list of references is long. Not only do we have the reference from our scripture today, which is the entire chapter of Isaiah 35, we have a host of others as well. This song includes themes from Psalm 139, where it talks about how darkness is not dark to God, how God's light is more powerful than anything. It also, I mean, it also, I think, in ways that we see more significantly, draws from the more prophetic Hebrew texts, like Song of Solomon, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 7, Isaiah 11, Isaiah 53, along with Isaiah 35. All of these verses proclaim God's promise to his people of a Messiah. In these verses, the Messiah is said to come from Jesse's lineage and to be a rose flowering from its stem. Our scripture passage today has a lot of beautiful promises from, from God to God's people. And then we have the new scripture references as well. This hymn takes the time to combine, combine important elements from both Matthew and Luke's birth stories. And it once again takes a step further to reference specific moments in Jesus' ministry throughout the two Gospels as well, including John 1, John 8, uh, and John 8. And it even references, it even has references to, believer, to beliefs held about Jesus' birth and life throughout the early church in Romans and Hebrews. While this list can seem overwhelming, and reading all of those scriptures would be overwhelming, or at least it was for me when I first began to study it, uh, the song itself does not feel overwhelming or too convoluted or too, like, filled. It is instead woven together beautifully. It is carefully, carefully done so that the theology blends together and gives us a beautiful image. And the result of all of these scriptures woven together is that this song is making two very big theological claims. Two things that we as Christians can know to be true and that can help us prepare to hear the Christmas story this year. Number one, the Christmas story has always been God's plan for his people. God has always been about bringing restoration to all of creation through the Messiah. And number two, the Messiah that was promised is so much better than we could have ever asked for or even imagined, as he brings restoration for not just the people of Israel, but for the whole world as well. We see the first truth in the Hebrew scriptures references, and especially in our reading today. We know that as Christians, our God is a good, is a good God and is at work in the lives of his people and his world. This is the story of the Bible and the work that God continues in the story of Christmas. Jesus, the Messiah, God coming down and becoming human to live among us and to save us has been part of God's plan since the beginning. The prophet Isaiah spoke of this message uh, in, when he says Messiah, which means anointed one, who would come to earth to save us. Many Jewish scholars around this the time of Isaiah had different ideas of what the Messiah would look like, what ways that the Messiah would bring justice and hope and ultimately salvation. As our text says this morning from Isaiah, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with di divine retribution, 
and he will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. There will be lame lame leap the, then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute shout, tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and the streams of the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. These are beautiful images of the salvation that the people of Israel were hoping for. And they are woven into this song to remind us of the anticipation that the people of Israel felt for their Messiah. In Lo How Arose, we see that Jesus is the anointed one, this one that the prophets spoke of, this one that would bring justice, hope, and salvation, the good news that God has promised his people. But this is where we see the second truth in our song. The Messiah that was promised was so much better than we could have ever asked for or what scholars could have even imagined at that time. Jesus comes not just for the Jewish people, but he widens the table for all of us to be included as he brings restoration to the whole world. As the song goes, and as our prepare our heart on the front of our bulletin says, true man yet very God, from sin and death he saves us and lightens every load. By singing these words together and dwelling on them, we begin to live into that Christmas joy and anticipation, where we see that hope blooms as we realize that the prophecies about the Messiah are true. We begin to prepare our hearts to receive the Lord Jesus. These are miraculous, life-changing truths that we see here in our song and in our Christmas story. Big claims, big prophecies that have high stakes. And yet, the way that we are invited into them could not be more different. Lo, has, how a rose has a beautiful line right in the middle of the second verse that gets me every time, without fail. The beginning and the end of the song ends with these beautiful images of fulfilled prophecies and assurances of Jesus being the Messiah. But in the middle, we are taken back to Bethlehem. With Mary, we behold it, the virgin mother kind. To show God's love aright, she bore to men a savior when half spent was the night. We behold it with Mary. This cosmic plan, this wonderful good news is delivered to us. The answer to entire people group's prayers appear as a baby and his mom gets to witness it. I think that is so, what is so miraculous about the birth of Jesus, and I think Lo How a Rose captures it so well in that one line. The gift of God is brought to us in the human, in the average, in the normal. While this song includes that his, uh, this birth, it includes these epic promises of God that span generations and that ultimately ends with sin and death defeated and Jesus as our Messiah. It also includes some pretty average shepherds who were stargazing. It includes a young woman who was given agency over her fate and her body who decided to say yes to God. And it includes our Savior, our Messiah, as a fragile body, a baby in a manger. When I was praying about the sermon, I was asking God what our community needed to hear, and it was this piece of the song that came to mind most. As we live into the joy of Advent, we have to remember that this joy, this good news of restoration, is brought to us in the moments that are average. Yes, the big show-stopping moments happen, the angels come to the shepherd. The line of Jesse has been fulfilled. Isaiah's prophecies have come to pass. True man, yet very God, who dispels darkness and from sin and death has saved us. This is true. We have confidence in who Jesus is. And yet, for all of that pomp and circumstance, it is through Mary that we behold it. It is through the love of a mother that Jesus entered the world through the awkwardness of a new relationship, the discomfort of pregnancy, the pain of childbirth, and the infinite joy of witnessing new life before her very eyes. It is through Mary that we behold this miracle. 
and I think of why the ad and I think why the anticipation of Advent is so special to me is because the important things happen to about Christmas happen all the time, not just in the grand formal events, but in the everyday moments, in the small ways that we prepare to connect with one another and to God. When we remember that it is with Mary that we behold the miracle of Jesus, then the preparation for Christmas happens. As we hum carols on our way to work and we're stuff, stuck in traffic, as we feel exhausted from the the, what this last season has brought us, as we experience loss and sorrow and frustrations at the same time as we experience joy and fun and celebration, as we hug the people that we love, all of these times are times that we are invited to live into this Advent joy, the joy as the, at the same time as the weariness, the hope in the dark, the peace in the chaos. Advent asks us to hold all of our biggest feelings at the same time. And Jesus' birth teaches us that life is sacred. And as we approach Advent, that is what we are to be reminded of. Christmas is a time where we invite, are invited into the anticipation of Jesus' return. The time when every promise will be fulfilled. This can be true and while we also know that the life we are living in now is only part of that. All of the messy, beautiful, hard, bad, and good moments of life are part of our story and therefore part of God's story. God enters into our average moments and makes them holy. God brings about his kingdom through our faithful living in whatever we are called to. Therefore, Christmas is also a time where we are called into, to live into the preparation by seeking out the small moments in our lives and recognizing that God is present with us in those moments too. I am going to end my sermon this morning with a poem that I stumbled upon as I wrote this sermon. And I find that poetry, like song, often has a way of summing up complex feelings and theology in just a few simple words. After this poem, we will hear and sing Lo How a Rose together, and I invite you to think about the grand scale of Jesus' birth in the average moments. Birth by Michael Longley. The cosmos shaper has come down to earth. Mary is counting his fingers and toes. Amen. If you uh, care to, in the blue hymnals, which are in the pews, uh, it's number 211, which I think it said up there, but uh, if you want to use, for the, if you need it for the music, but the words will also be up here as well. <clears throat> blooming from tender stem has sprung of Jesse's lineage coming as saints of old have sung it came a flowered bright amid the gold of when half spent was the night Isaiah twas foretold it The rose I had in mind With Mary we behold it The virgin To show God's love aright, 
she bore to us a Savior, when half spent was the night. Flower whose fragrance tender with sweetness fills the air. Dispels in glorious splendor the darkness everywhere. True man yet very God, from sin and death he saves us. And lightens every load. I invite praise and worship to come up. Uh, the children are invited to head downstairs. And I invite you to rise to hear the benediction. May the blessing of the God of Sarah and Hagar the blessing of the child born of Mary, and the blessing of the Spirit who broods over us be with you all. Amen. This is number 318 in the blue hymnal, if you care to look at it, or the words will be up here. As we go into this next week with joy, which our third Advent candle represents this morning, um, Let's reflect that in how we sing this song, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. And nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns, that all is on the floor of the Sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. No more the sins and sorrows grow, the thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessing. is far as the curse far is far as far as the curse is Amen. Go in peace.